Hello everyone, welcome to the Albert and Billy Show. You're listening to us live here on WUAT Radio and you're watching us on Channel 18 BTC Fiber Television and also check us out on the BTC Fiber YouTube channel. Be sure to get on there and like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Leave comments, nice ones hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely nice ones. Uh, and uh, get on there and check it out. But get on there and subscribe, folks. Uh, I know the more subscriptions, that, the better it is. I just I know that. I don't, I don't know all the detail and all that, but I just know that that's a fact. So get on there and subscribe. Hit that subscribe button and like and comment. And we do appreciate it. And you can watch all of our episodes on there. And you can watch all the original BTC Fiber television shows on the YouTube channel as well. And we have one of those show hosts with us right now here today. Mr. Glenn Edison is with us. Hello, Glenn. Hey. Glad to have you here, buddy. Thank you for having me. Oh, no problem. And here in a few minutes, he's going to be telling us about, well, he's wrote a book. And I, I didn't even know that. He's wrote a book, so we're going to be hearing all about that. And uh, he's actually, uh, well, he's act getting ready to film his uh, 200th episode for Valley Views. So we'll talk about that as well. It's kind of ironic because we were on his show talking about our 200th episode. <laughs> yeah, that was a big event yeah. for us. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah, it was. And I'm realizing uh, as we were talking the other day that we're closing in our 300th episode. Yeah. So uh, we're going to have to come up with an idea of what to do. Any of you guys have suggestions, feel free to let us know. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. Uh, but uh, I think today it'll be 289 so yeah it'll be before you know it it's crazy but anyway how you doing Papa oh well I uh, I'm glad to be here I'll put it that way well good good going to start crazy uh, I'm glad the were. ice is gone me too I don't care to say it I don't miss it one bit people were stuck stranded it was crazy. I, was, I got out in it. I was able to get out in it, but you know, it, you had to go real slow, that's for sure. You sure did. <laughs> people were sliding all over the roads. It was crazy. I'm sure some people, if, if I had gotten out, I would have fallen. Yes, yes. And I'm sure some people did get out and some people did fall. I'm sure, yeah. I know. It, I don't know when somebody said they get excited about that type of weather, uh, as a kid, yeah, it's magical when you're a kid, but after that, it's not magical at all. <laughs> you realize all the bad stuff that comes with it. Well, the snow is uh, another world. Yeah. The ice is another yes. world. It really is. Now, if it was just snow, I'm all right with that. I'm not a problem with that. But it's never just snow, usually. there's The ice comes along yeah. with it. And we had a lot of black ice. So yeah, we're glad to be back and glad the, the snow and ice is gone because it was here for a good week, wasn't it? Every oh, bit of it or longer. So definitely glad to be back, Papa. And the sun's out, Papa. It's beautiful. I'm always down for that. I like the sun being out. Um, that was another thing with this uh, snow and ice, it, just the gloomy days, just back to back to back. Uh, I can't hardly handle that. <laughs> I need to move to the beach or something in the wintertime, come back, you know. <laughs> That'd suit me just fine. <laughs> well, Papa, before we uh, get to your famous trivia and interview Mr. Glenn Edison here with us, we'll do some announcements. Uh, first, I'll start off with the birthdays, folks. We got several. We got several. I'm going to get a drink of water first before I even start this, guys. <laughs> I've learned my lesson on that. Because there's several. Let's see. Okay, and this will be from January 23rd uh, through January 31st. New Year's Eve. Not. <laughs> That's not New Year's Eve. I was thinking December 31st for a split second. <laughs> Man, we sure did Monday. Okay, here we go, folks. Happy birthday to the following people. Uh, on the 23rd, Miss Imogene Brown had a birthday. Happy birthday, Imogene. Also, happy birthday, Emily Freddy. She had hers on the 24th, so that was yesterday. Day before yesterday. Day before yesterday. Okay, and 
Melissa Bayless also had one that day on the 24th. Happy birthday, Melissa. We know her, Papa. Oh, yeah. Uh, Mike Real and Rachel Nell, they both had birthdays on the 25th, which was yesterday. Also yesterday, Molly Stent had a birthday. So happy birthday to Mike, Molly, and Rachel. <laughs> There's a show, Mike and Molly. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny uh, also Nathan Smith Sandy Dotson Molly Peters happy birthday to Molly Sandy and Nathan they all had birth they all have birthdays today actually as we speak yeah so happy birthday to you guys uh, Molly Peters Sandy Dotson and Nathan Smith tomorrow we got some birthdays we got two uh, Christy Anderson's is tomorrow and also Victoria Rodriguez that's the 27th. 28th, Clifford Keener. Uh, also, Donnie Pendergrass. That's the 28th. January 29th, uh, early happy birthday to Carol Raines, John Tollett. Uh, and that's it for that day. So, happy birthday, John and Carol. January the 30th, happy birthday to Aaron Reese. Uh, and then, happy birthday to Kathy Mills and Jill Anderson. Uh, they have birthdays on January the 31st and uh, Glenn you had a anniversary yes Is that right okay 43rd 43rd on the 23rd right yes <laughs> okay and you're gonna celebrate this weekend though right right, right. cool I don't yeah I don't blame you you could have done much last weekend could you <laughs> no <laughs> they build a snowman <laughs> maybe <laughs> yeah I don't blame you for that so anyway, happy birthday, guys. Hope all y'all had or is having or is going to have a happy birthday or anniversary. And that to you, Papa. Yeah, you can ask my wife how many good and <laughs> We might to do uh, that. Uh, the, uh, the political <laughs> way to say I, they were all good, but that's right. She might have a difference of opinion. So yeah, that makes it interesting. <laughs> we might have to bring her old pop up. That's funny. Uh, the happy anniversary, Glenn, 43, that's a, that's good, that's for sure, especially nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> well, Papa, I guess I'll do the announcements, there's so many of them and all. <laughs> there's not many today, folks, uh, uh, there's really not, uh, we're just not used to it, so here we go. This one, it, we got that one coming up, though, actually, in <laughs> like an hour and a half, folks, uh, but it's a good one and it's for a good cause it's the spaghetti dinner it's going to be at the rescue squad uh, so remember volunteer they volunteer so all these events that they have you're contributing to a very good cause if you go because that's the only way they can operate isn't it papa yes ma'am yes sir <laughs> it is it's the only way because um these people work for free i think that gets lost somewhere at times and we kind of tend to remind people because they deserve the recognition. It's, they're doing this for free. So that, that's important and that goes a long ways. But anyway, they're having a, a spaghetti dinner tonight, folks. It's gonna be at the rescue squad, spaghetti and meatballs, papa. Garlic bread, Parmesan cheese. Uh, and I'm sorry, but I have no idea what the last word says. <laughs> sponsor, I believe that's what it says, sponsor. Yeah, sponsored by Good Plumber. Okay, Good Plumber. Good plumber is sponsoring. All right, um, that must be a new place. I don't know, but it's sponsored by Good Plumber, folks, and it's uh, literally in about an hour and a half. It will last till eight o'clock p.m. Though, so don't think you got to get there at five. You got a little bit of time, that's for sure. Sounds pretty good though, don't it, Papa? Spaghetti oh, and meatballs. Yeah. 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 Uh, I'll turn that down. Uh, let's see. Okay, folks, we have a notice of a meeting. This is, well, they're both going to be with the Butsell County Board of Education. Uh, the first announcement I got from them, they're having a meeting on February the 5th at 5.30 p.m. It's going to take place at uh, the Butsell County Middle School for this one. And then also they're going to meet on that same day, February 5th, at 6 p.m. Uh, at the Butsell County Middle School. So the planning meeting is at 5.30 and then the regular meeting will be at 6 p.m. And the first agenda item for this meeting will be the discussion and possible action to extend the director of schools contract. 
we'll have more on that uh, in the following weeks and months, I'm sure. I'm not going to get into all that, though, yet, but I uh, know a little bit about that situation, though. Yeah, that could get very interesting. <laughs> I was leaving it at that. That could get very interesting. Um, but anyway, that's all the announcements I got, Papa. Here's uh, uh, something I don't need. <laughs> So, Papa, I guess it's time for uh, your trivia. Trivia yeah. time here. Trivia have, time in uh, Tennessee. I have chosen this week's trivia section to be on television and the programs oh. and the people, the characters okay. that constitute a lot of our attention because we yeah. have certain programs that we mm -hmm. like to tune into. Right, exactly. So let's see how we might well have a chance the, at this, Glenn. <laughs> the, people, the people that are listening, this it might won't. strike a chord with someone about oh, something they watch or they used to watch. I have people tell me all the time that they answer and the ones watching, they answer, you know, they answer the TV. You know, so I have That's a lot of people good. tell me that they're answering your questions, Papa. Okay. <laughs> The character John Boy Waltons. came to us via what program? The Waltons. The Waltons. That's got to be going back in antiquity. Yeah, it, uh, yeah. It's. I mean, the show's been out for a while, and it was set when it was on. It was set in the early days. Like I'm not sure long when. Long time ago. Long time. Yeah. Yeah. World War Two. Remember that always been the episode. You know, good night, John Boy. Good night. There's a whole slew of them. Remember that? <laughs> and they just say good night. Uh, Every one would, yeah. Okay, who had the male lead in Green Acres? Eddie Albert, is that his name? Eddie Albert. Yes. That's that's what we named our son, Eddie uh, Albert. Did y'all name him after him by chance? No. Uh oh. <laughs> well, it's a fair question. Oh, Albert you, came from of me. course, duh, yeah. <laughs> okay, number three. What was the name of the Lone Ranger's horse? And the Lone Ranger is now active mm -hmm. on grit. Do you know that one? Line the, here. the name of the horse of uh, the Lone Ranger. And you said it a, a long time ago, but it's been. Hi, Hi Silver. Silver again. Silver. There yeah, you Silver. go. Silver. See what a good clue can do, Papa. Okay. Who is the star of the Carol Burnett show? Gee, I wonder, is it Carol <laughs> Burnett? <laughs> Carol Burnett. <laughs> that one's too easy. That one's too well, easy. Well, we could fairly say, though, she had yeah. a lot of stars on that show. Yeah, Very sure talented did. cast. A lot of. Famous people got their start on the Ed Sullivan show. What yeah, type of show did that. Ed Sullivan did hmm. Ed Sullivan have? Uh, what was it called? Was it a talk show or something? No, it was it's not called the Ed Sullivan show, uh, wasn't it? What? Uh, Variety uh, show. Variety show. Yes. Oh, really? That was you, a guess. You never knew what was going to be on there. It could be a okay. trapeze artist, or it could be yeah. a. A country singer. You know, I kind of like. I kind of hate that I missed out on those days. Like, that's they should bring that back because they were big back then, weren't they? That was before color. Yeah. 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 And, he had the Beatles on. I remember. Mm -hmm. uh, and with yeah. Pop -Pop, yeah. Yeah. And Pop, there were several variety shows though back oh, in the there day. Was like, several, yeah. Several. yeah. I wish it was. I, it, wish I got to see some of them. That's the reason that I chose. To have the subjects that I have mm -hmm. on this show, mm -hmm. it's it's variety. 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 Was it variety? Okay. Is spice of life, Papa. What does <laughs> uh, what was Andy right. Griffith's son name on Mayberry? Well, that's easy. His name was Opie. Opie. <laughs> Opie Taylor. Okay. What was the aunt's name on Andy? Oh, Griffith's that's easy show? too. Take it, Glenn. Aunt <clears throat> B. Aunt B. Yeah. You know, hold up, Papa. We got to speak to it. Uh, the woman that played her, you know, I've, I've heard several people say, and they, I guess, maybe heard from some of the cast members. I don't know. But I've heard she was very difficult to work with. I've Have heard that. I've heard, heard that. too. I don't you know. would never think it because she plays such a, you she, know, a, a loving she, grandma. On she there. had a sweet disposition. She did. In the show. Must have been a good actress. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Who had the male lead in Beverly Hillbillies? The male, oh, that's, that's Uncle Jed. Jed. Clampett. What? Jed, Jed Clampett. Clampett, Buddy Ibsen. Buddy Ibsen. That's yeah. that was the the male man. Yeah, yeah. Uncle Jed, Buddy and he had Granny. And let me tell you, the Beverly Hillbillies would not have been the Beverly Hillbillies without Granny. Gosh, no. she was so funny. She made that show. She was not as, <laughs> as she was not as old as she portrayed. No, no. She did a good and boy, job. Boy, she was a firecracker, was she? 
<laughs> okay. Who was the top star, so. male star, in MASH? I hope you know that one, Glenn. That would have been, uh, <coughs> no, not that. I was thinking of that. I, think, I mean, there's a bunch I'm, of characters in that, right? Uh, but the name, the, the man's name that was... Mm -hmm. Number one, in my opinion, mm. is who I wrote down. Like the, you want the star's name or the character? Okay. The, the star's name. Well, I can see him. I can see a face, but I see a bunch of faces for hey, that show. Hey. Alan Alda. Is, is that Alan his name? Alda. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there we go. That name just popped yeah. in my brain. Hey, I, hey. Yeah, thank you. Now, let's see what clues do. The last, again. The last question. The character... Archer Bunker from <laughs> Archie All in the Family has crossed over to a lawman in another program. Oh, remember that show, Glenn? In, in the Heat of the there Night. There you go. In the Heat of the Night. I thought those would be harder to answer than they were. Well, uh, we we're just really good. How about that? <laughs> I stand corrected. Thank there you. There you go. We aced that, buddy boy. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, you're welcome. I'm just glad I can answer some of them this time. But I, a fun fact about Mass, I don't know how I know this, but I do. I know their final episode is the highest rated episode of all time. Really? Mm hmm Yeah. It was... Uh, a lot well, of people watched that episode. The characters did a good job of presenting to the public mm -hmm. who they were supposed to be. Yeah, must have. And that's true in... Uh, the Be Author program, all mm -hmm. those women portrayed their character to oh, the, the Golden hip, Girls, yeah. To the hill. Yes. Oh, that, that, yeah. Set, television shows back then had, I think they had better writing. I really, truly yeah. do. The writers must have been very talented in that era because. Well, uh, but that, with the, that show there, though, was kind of a rarity in the fact that you had four leads, four oh. very accomplished actresses, yes. you know, that. But we're okay with sharing the spotlight. I guess that's how that—that that was the magic of that show and how it worked. But each one got to have their time in the limelight. Yes, mm -hmm. actually, the their the all of them, every uh, all four leads won an Emmy. All really? of them did. I don't know if that's ever happened. Where all the leads win one on a show, but they they did. No, I I didn't not know that. Yeah. That, that's, that's a very talented cast, though. She was in Maud, too. That's the yeah, author's yeah. first show. Yeah, Maud. Yeah. Um, she's yeah. very, she was a very talented woman. But all of them was. Like Betty White. I mean, she, she was great. White. Yeah, she's great. <laughs> I've got, this don't go any further. I've got another sheet. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, um... Take uh, well, no, we'll, we'll go ahead and talk to Mr. Glenn here. Actually, we can we'll start talking to you, bud, and see what you're uh, into these days. Then we'll take a break. But uh, first off, uh, well, congratulations! Uh, Valley Views has well, been on since 2020, so yeah. we're talking four years now 24, right? Yeah, four years now, yeah. uh, and you're gearing up for your uh, 200th episode. Yes, so are you excited about that? Yeah, I am. Mm -hmm. I, the, I tell people, when Ethan first asked me back in 2020, huh. uh, of course my background is journalism. So, oh, uh, I don't get so it, it's, uh, that comes kind of natural to me. Mm -hmm. But when he asked me about doing a television show, uh, I said, yeah, I'll do that. And then, then after he left that day, I thought, man, you don't know anything about television. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, what am I going to do? So yeah. the first few episodes we had, and we had them at uh, Harris Parks where we started there in Dunlap. Oh, okay. That's and, a cool uh, place. Uh, you know, they, they were sketchy, and I, and I wasn't sure if it was mm -hmm. even going to make it, you know. Thought, yeah, you know, right. This is, uh, maybe I bit off more than I could see. Right, right, yeah. But uh, then it got easier as time went on, mm -hmm. and... Uh, uh, so it just got easier and easier, and I I really enjoy it. It's a lot of fun. That makes all the difference and, uh, in the world, don't it? I've uh, had I've only had a few, I like to say, a few people that uh, made my job hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, uh, most of them have been very, very good, and uh, I've made a lot of friends, people I don't know, because I try to do a lot of uh, uh, chamber members in both cities here that's, in Pipeville and, and in uh, Dunlap. And uh, that keeps me busy, and I met a lot of new that's people smart. that I didn't know, 
uh, mm -hmm. before yeah. and uh, uh, I might have heard of them or heard of their business mm -hmm. but I mm -hmm. didn't actually know them so then I called them and had to explain to them what I do yeah and uh, and so they're they're pretty good about it when I tell them it's, it's free. It doesn't cost them anything. <laughs> <laughs> they like that part. They like that part. I guarantee. Does it. anyone ever turn you down <clears throat> when you invite them to be a guest? I, I've had one or two, and they're all because they were. They said they were camera shy. Mm. Oh. And I tried to explain well, to them. Yeah. And now, see, when we first started, uh, I would look at the camera <clears throat> a lot because yeah. you know. Cause, and then after about three or four episodes, I yeah. thought, eh. I'm not looking at the camera. And I just, just what I get involved with the person, so mm -hmm. I talk with them just like we're talking here, mm -hmm. and yeah. it just I try to put people at ease. And that's uh, important, Glenn. But uh, a lot of people, like I say, I've had like one or two that were just camera shy and they just didn't want to get in front of a camera. Mm -hmm. And I tried to tell them, I said, well, don't look at it. <laughs> that's what I always say. Don't even look at it. You know. I guess it's easier said than done for some people, but yeah, trivia is how we disarm them a little bit. They get comfortable. Yeah. Let me ask you a question, mm -hmm. another question. All right. How do you select the guests that you invite to be a participant on your program? Well, first I go through uh, the Chamber of Commerce list, uh, both here and in uh, Dunlap. How do you get on that list? Well, they, mm -hmm. they I go to their website and uh, and find the names and then I'll I'll just call them and uh, so the chamber list oh. yeah both chambers have a list of, mm -hmm. of, of mm -hmm. members mm -hmm. so yeah that's what so it's about. not necessarily someone that's in business no sometimes um, there might be somebody that represents a company like a, a mm -hmm. health care maybe they're uh, uh, their position in a health care is maybe a maybe they're a psychologist and they don't necessarily oh, that's a good one. they're not necessarily a, a business owner there you go but they're part of a uh, an area because i try to pick things that are uh that people can benefit from mm -hmm. something because uh, mm -hmm. i look at some things and i thought well i don't know a whole lot about that that would be a good pr something to go you know and uh -huh. if you people. would be in line the, the your uh, public would be <clears throat> in line too yes that's what True. we try to, that's yeah, what we try point. to do is enlighten them and uh and uh, what I do on my interviews is the very first thing I do is get background on people. I yeah. want them yeah. to know, say, uh, you may not know this person, but let me yeah. tell you about him. Let's get, let's get them uh, involved. I like that, actually. And That's that important, way, too. And yeah, that way they get to know them. There you and, go. And uh, they kind of get to know. Like uh, I interviewed a man the other day, and um, he spent 26 years in special ops in the Army. Oh, wow. And uh, so automatically when I bring that out, if there's veterans watching, they'll automatically right. key in That's on right. that. And uh, I've already, and, and what I try to do is to promote the program. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll try to take a picture of, of the person I interview. Yeah. And then I'll post it on my Facebook page and say, hey, look for this interview coming up. Oh, I, I like that. And That's uh, smart. And I, that, we've done that a few times. Well, I did it. He didn't. He won't touch the computer. <laughs> But yeah, that that's a good way to do it. It gets it people is. to look for the interview. Absolutely. And then, uh, of course, once they're out on BTC Fibers YouTube, mm -hmm. you can share them, and yeah. uh, people can put them on their. If they have a business, then they can put that interview on their website. If they have oh, a website, yeah. And well, think about think that, about, Papa. Uh, your listening audience, mm -hmm. they will learn something about the people that you are interviewing because mm -hmm. you're an informant to the public about the person that you're interviewing and uh, I would say there's been times that I've tuned you in mm -hmm. that the person that you were interviewing something they said got my attention uh -huh. yeah it made me want to listen to what they had to say rather than what you had to say mm -hmm. they were the one that you wanted to spotlight to be on right right because uh I do like, I will give you a compliment. I didn't mean to interrupt you. I no, thought no, I was no. going to say it before you started, but because uh, it's about that. Like, I do like how you, um, you do let them talk. You do let them talk in any way. And, and there's kind of an art to that. It's not the easiest thing in the world to do, actually. But you do a good job of that, well, thank Glenn. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. that. Because what I try to do, uh, I very rarely try to interrupt the person that's talking mm -hmm. unless they come across and say something I go oh I need to ask a question about that yeah. and then I might interrupt and say hey you mentioned yeah. this let's uh, let's talk about that and then I let them yeah. talk about it that's but, good uh, yeah uh, 
<laughs> so uh, so I, you've got no one to answer to. You may come up with any question that you deem necessary to mm. get that person to let the people that are watching know more about them and what they represent. Right, right. Mm. That's what I want, I want people to know, just about the people. Uh, because when I first started, uh, matter of fact, um, mm. Ethan and I, when we started in Dunlap, and that's where our base mm -hmm. was. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the same time, I was thinking, you know, we need to do some programs in Pike. Well, Ethan was thinking that was a very good And idea. Ethan was thinking the same thing. We were both thinking it, but we mm -hmm. hadn't talked to each other. <laughs> and one day I asked him, I said, what do you think about doing a, sh a show in Pikeville? And he goes, I like that idea. He said, and I, so, I think that's and a then great it, idea. Then it just grew. And mm -hmm. uh, so uh, I've had a blast getting to know people up here. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. And talking to them. Because in Pikeville, we do uh, on site. Because uh, we don't have, I love those. Don't, don't do a, a mm -hmm. studio now in Dunlap. We uh, use the Chamber of Commerce office mm -hmm. for our studio, and occasionally we'll go on site for different things. Uh yeah. Now I, there's a man. I, it's been a while back since I've seen that episode. Though, but you were at like a maybe a trout place or something. One yes, time. Pickett's Trout Ranch. We yeah. went that, down there. That, now that was a cool uh, looking place that I did not know about until I saw that. Yeah, and they're having to rebuild some stuff. The snow and ice uh, oh, collapse really? where they're where their trout, uh, where they feed their trout, so uh -huh. they're gonna have to re remodel a little bit. Dang, but, that was a nice place, you know, from yeah. the looks of it. Well, that was fun, because you go inside the cave where that water comes out, mm -hmm. and uh, I'd, I'd been to that area, but I'd not been into the cave. Yeah. And uh, so that was uh, new to so. me. And so I like doing these things too, because mm -hmm. I like to learn things. Just like we yeah. went to the, uh, the head of the Sequatchie, Yes. Uh, I'd heard all about that for ever. I've, been, uh, I've been living here, what, 40 years? We've been and, supposed to film there for, and, we got to get up there too. And, uh, how so, was it? Oh, it was great. And, uh, you know, and then when you go and see where the river actually comes out of that cave and it's only like 10 feet wide or, you know, or so. Mm. It's not a river there. Th no. And then, and then as you follow it and you, it goes down and it spreads out. On, so oh, it's, yeah. it's really neat. So, mm. so I've, I, I've really learned a lot from uh, the interviews. Yeah. I, I think I learn more than the people sometimes because uh, uh, yeah. uh, uh, you listen to people and uh, get to talk to them and then you make friends. And that's what I like is the making friends part. Absolutely. And uh, uh, so it's it's fun and I'm glad, mm -hmm. I'm glad Ethan asked me to do this because I've, I've grown from it. Yeah, and, um, yeah. Uh, and now I, I, I uh, here lately, I, I, of course, I've started, um, well, it's been a year now, I guess, mm -hmm. uh, with the radio station there in Dunlap. Well, and I did I, notice you, I, I meant to ask you that too, dang it. I saw you on one of the episodes kind of recently, I'm not sure when, but it wasn't that long ago. You were uh, in a radio station. Yeah. I can't believe uh, I forgot to ask that. Uh, We've uh, I've interviewed uh, Cody McCarver and some other people. Uh, mm -hmm. We do a live. Actually, it's a BTC Fiber. We did a live mm -hmm. interview, but we're cool. on the radio as well. Yeah, and uh, so that was fun, and uh, I'm enjoying that. That is um, cool. You know, I get up every day, and uh, it's one of those things where you're you're glad to go to work. You're happy because it's a fun thing to do. I do the swap and show that. program for an hour and a half every day, and uh, oh. uh, it's a lot of fun. I get. Uh, I get to, uh, well. I, we've got some people off of Griffith Mountain actually that call in. Really? Uh, yeah. So. Uh, and so y'all do it every day. Every day, Monday through Friday, uh, from eight to nine thirty, and uh, so it's it's a lot of fun. I bet. Let me tell you, I, I, cool. the secret to not working is enjoying what you do. Yeah. That's and, right. And that's right. So when I do these interviews, it's not work to me. When I do the mm. radio job, it's not work to me. It's I, just fun. I agree. I, I, I agree. Uh, so uh, another uh, place that I like where you went to was uh, Weatherby Farms. I couldn't yes. think of the name. I've been to that place. You know, uh, that is a very nice place. Yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, uh, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that place is beautiful. It yeah. really is. Well, a lot of your programs have opened up. <clears throat> people's uh, acceptance of what they do mm -hmm. uh, this is uh, what you're doing may not be as meaningful to you as it is to the person to get what they're doing over to the public mm -hmm. that's uh, that's the role that, that true. you're playing yeah that is true and like I say I'm having fun I'm having a blast doing that all the different places that Ethan and I have gone together uh, that's the part I like uh, too. you know and 
Uh, <clears throat> we went out mm -hmm. to Wood's Apple Orchard. Uh, oh yeah, uh, yeah. A little while back, and uh, I, you know, I saw course, a little bit of that one too. I forgot about that. Everybody's, you know, heard of Wood's Apple Orchard mm -hmm. around here. Everybody's heard it, but then when you actually get out there and yeah. you really start looking at all the little things they do. Yeah, uh, I mean, because yeah, uh, that's true. Yeah, I've already done that. I bet that was nice. Yeah, I mean, there's uh, just all little bitty jobs they do, and uh, I think that's important to life. It's, it's not a lot of major things, it's a lot of little things that you, when you put them together, it, uh, they come together. Dang right. That's very true. I mean, you're, but your ratings are, are going up. I noticed, uh, I, I counted at least seven just then where they're well over a thousand views, you know, so. Uh, and you had a few over that, you know, so, you know, it is getting better and better and bigger and bigger. So you're doing something right, Glenn. Well, I hope so. Uh, our, uh, the one I remember the most is the one on the, the uh, uh, Cowboy Church up there. Out at, um, I like that. that. And that that one was one of my that, songs, actually. It was two something thousand. Was, yeah. Uh, it was a little over 2,500. That was a very, that, I don't want to go there. Tell us about that place you got to. Well, uh, it was really neat because you, you go there and you think, well, what is this place? You know, you, you <laughs> see this house and you think, well, that's a ranch house. And mm -hmm. then you see the stables, but then they have several horses there. Yeah. And, but they teach, uh, what they do is they, uh, they have a, I guess a teaching, what you call a teaching compound, where they teach uh, folks about oh. veterinary science and oh, things like that. They that. have a few out there that they they work with them and and teach them and train them. That's a that's and, real cool. Uh, and they also have uh, some. Uh, they have a couple of cottages out there. I believe it was a couple uh -huh. that you can actually go out there and stay. That's even, that's even, that's and, awesome uh, right there. And then of course they have animals too, not just horses. They have animals out there as well that they. Uh, they take care of and and do and and the view i mean mm -hmm. <laughs> the view is just it's just the view it I mean, is i mean you're up there on top of the top of a mountain or a, well i guess you call it a hill i guess it's not really a mountain a, a, uh, a big hill then yeah yeah, yeah, yeah ridge, ridge yeah, yeah. Ridge, probably a better uh, that's a good yeah <laughs> true true and uh, when you look out both sides you see both sides of the valley and it's, it's so pretty wow it is yeah, talk about valley views. That yeah. is one, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I've told uh, we had the same producer as Glenn, and I, I told him earlier that I, was, I told him actually a while back that I would like to go out there on location and film there because I watched it. You know that episode. Yeah. That place was beautiful. You yeah, know, a real yeah. cool place to go to. Yeah, and really nice people. Everybody I've met, uh, mm -hmm. I've not met anybody that was. Uh, uh, mean or ill will maybe a few politicians i don't know right. yeah. no, i'm just yeah. kidding. i've interviewed a few politicians but uh, yeah. no they they've been pretty good too i, I can't mm -hmm. complain about the politicians they they were all good yeah because uh, um uh, i have to keep them in check they oh keep me yeah in check because i don't want to get in trouble so that's right it's nice to have friends <laughs> they say yeah that no two snowflakes are alike but i bet you could verify that by saying You've met no two people alike. <laughs> that's, tr Ooh. that's true. Uh, Good one, Papa. Jeremiah said, we're fearfully and wonderfully made. Every uh, person you meet is just different. Yeah. Well, and that's true. And I think that's what makes the world go round because oh, we're yeah. all different. It'd be boring uh, otherwise. <laughs> yeah, Very it really boring. would. Yeah. And, uh, and you get to meet people and you think, wow, this is pretty neat what you got a set up. And mm -hmm. then you then the very next week you go do something else and you go, wow, that's pretty neat. I like this. And yeah. You, so you, you see everything's different. That's you, true. You that's have true. enriched your life, but you've enriched the lives of people that get mm -hmm. to know you and mm -hmm. get to watch your program. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, that's right. uh, I know I've, I've uh, actually one day I was uh, here at Scotty's eating lunch. Love and, that place. And, and, and uh, 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 this gentleman come up behind me and tapped me on the shoulder and I turned around and I said, I said, yes, sir, can I help you? He goes, I see you on television. <laughs> I said, oh, thanks. I said, thanks for watching, you know. And I, I appreciate that because mm. that's happened to me several times. It will. It can, and, uh, uh, catches me off guard sometimes. Yeah. I don't know about you, but it does me sometimes. And, uh, yeah. I, I appreciate it because that it tells is, me yeah. they're, they're watching yeah. uh, and uh, they see that's my right. programs and uh, or they, they'll come up. And, uh, I've had people say, I've seen you somewhere. And I, I said, Valley Views? They go, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> you know, 
And, That's so funny. I and, can relate uh, to that. You can too. Yeah, when you, especially like when I come to Pineville, which mm -hmm. uh, I have a limited amount of people I know here. I mean, yeah, I, I know yeah. more, but now, but yeah, uh, you, you know, you I, I know, don't. Yeah, yeah. And, and when people say, "Hey, I, I know you," and you go. Oh, you do? <laughs> yes. <that's laughs> so, uh, what do you know about me? <laughs> no, <laughs> Bob Bog, I'll, that's how I was at first uh, when, when we first started doing this. It, it, I don't know why, but it kind of freaked me out at first. Like, I, you, you get that a lot. You know, I, I got used to it here, but then it started happening in other towns. You yeah, know, that yeah. really freaked me out, you know. But you do get used to it. But I, I mean, I have to say at first it was a adjustment, that's for sure. Yeah. But, it is, but it is nice of people and you, you do want to hear that and, and that's important to them to talk to you so talk back to them and be nice you know yeah and, nothing uh, wrong with that no and and, and uh, that um uh, i guess it humbles me when they see that it does it, yes it does me because it does uh, me too uh, it just uh, lets me know that there's other people out there that see this and they and that's I, right. it makes me want to do even better that's right and, yes you know, and stretch out to other people mm. and uh, just like doing uh, this show, someone said, you're going to be on Albert Billy show? I said, mm -hmm. yeah. I said, I don't know what they want me for. I said, but they, I, said I don't know if I can help their show, but uh, I said, they do a good job without me. But, uh, well, thank you. But, uh, but yeah, I, li I like our show. Y'all do a good job. And well, thank what you. What you do. And um, it, it's just the, the way you do your show. You know, the, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's like pepper and salt. And not, <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's and, right. And uh, right. so, you know, and that's what it, it takes is uh, just uh, being different. It, yeah, it does. And, and yeah, we aggravate each other sometimes, but people love that. I get that all the time. They love that part. Or they'll say the chemistry, you know, and things like that. So, yeah, I, I get what you're saying. It does mean a lot to hear, you know, comments like that sometimes. It, it really does. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, like uh, even with my radio program, sometimes you wonder, mm -hmm. you know, when you're, um, mm -hmm. there's some days you have to, like today I had an interview with a local realtor. Oh. We, we do 30-minute uh, programs on Fridays with yeah. local people to inform people of things that they need cool. to know about. Yeah. And um, so after that, that cuts into my, my program, so I have to really mm -hmm. rush through things. So it's yeah. having to hurry. And sometimes you think, well, I didn't do a too good of a job today because I had to rush. Mm -hmm. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, when people call you and say, "Hey, we appreciate you. We listen to you," yes, uh, you know, and that helps you. It does. It really Let me tell does. You something I've observed in you, from watching you and listening to you today, humbleness is not necessarily a trait that everyone possesses. Unfortunately, possess it. yeah. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yes. Appreciate it. I like that. I do too. Well, I do too. That's um. Uh, you know. I, I look at it as it's not about me, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's just a talent that I've been given mm -hmm. and I need to use it. Exactly, so yeah. I'm using it and if it can help somebody or better somebody's day, right. you know, uh, just like with uh, our book. Let now, me, uh, let we got about to say, no, you, you need to we're brought over here too, though, to uh, promote his book, you know, so we got to talk about that. But we will take a short break and what we'll do is we'll come back and talk about your book. And we'll have some sports of all sorts, of course, and all that good stuff, and some good old Albertology and jokes. Can't 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 have a show about them jokes, Glenn. That's for sure. They love Papa's jokes, but all that is coming up right after the break. So stick around, folks. You need a bank that you can depend on. Here at Citizens Truck County Bank, we have the most dependable staff that you will ever meet. Call in, you will not get an automated attendant. You'll get a person. But on the other side, we have all the technology that anyone would need from apps to online banking to bill pay. So please come and grow with us as we're about to celebrate our 50th year. We are the only community bank you will ever need. Support small business and shop DunlapMercantile.com. 
At Jason Lewis Dunlap Supercenter, we're committed to be better. Better prices, better vehicles, a better experience. Your Jason Lewis Dunlap Supercenter understands that you rely on us to provide you with the highest quality of used vehicles. With over 350 pre-owned cars, trucks, and SUVs. So what are you waiting for? Let us show you a better experience with the Jason Lewis Automotive family. Come visit us at Rankin Avenue here in Dunlap or on the web at DunlapSuperCenter.com. Bledsoe Telephone Co-op, connecting the Sequatchie Valley to the world. Papa's born ready. Don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back, folks, to the Albert and Billy Show. You're listening to us here on WUAT Radio, and you're watching us on Channel 18 BTC Fiber Television, and watch us on the BTC Fiber YouTube channel. Like I said, I really don't forget to get on there and like, subscribe, comment, nice stuff, and all that good stuff. All right, Papa, we want to thank our sponsors. Uh, I'm going to have to go through it kind of quickly today, though, for time, but... A huge thank you to the following people. These are our sponsors, so a huge thank you to Citizens Tri-County Bank, Bilbury Insurance, Scotty's, the offices of Janine Boynton, Lisa Wheeler, and Michael Walker, uh, Matt Massengill and his friendly staff down at Farm Bureau Insurance in South Potville, right by Putnam Reed Funeral Home. Uh, they're both about as South Potville as you can get, aren't they? <laughs> yeah. uh, also, well, Nick Rowe Antiques, now remember they'll be back open in April, very fir very first of April, they'll be back open, uh, and their other store to Spring Street Antiques. I'm assuming they're going to do the same thing with that. I would say. I would think so. Yeah. Uh, also Morgan Brothers Barbecue. They got great food and they got a buffet. Of course Morgan Brothers. You also got the Pontville Family Restaurant. Uh, remember they're open for breakfast only, and if you go get a waffle. I can tell you, their waffles are good. And of course, with Morgan Brothers also, you have the Bank Walker Brewery. Uh, you can go check that out uh, Thursday, Fridays, and Saturdays. Very nice place. Very nice place. And um, if you haven't been to the brewery, you need to check it out. It's, it's a nice place. They got good food. And uh, they, but they won't, I know what I'm supposed to pool tournaments. They've got pool tournaments on Thursdays. And they're bringing. I'll have more info about that, but the two things are bring the pizza back. People had a meltdown over the pizza going away. Uh, and uh, they, they really did, it's crazy. So they're bringing that back and they're also going to try some poker, folks. I'll get all the info on that, but they're gonna have a poker night. I mean, you can't win no money or nothing like that, yeah, but still, <laughs> you know. They're gonna do that, so I'll give you more details as that comes along. State Farm Insurance, Nick Smith and his friendly staff at the Bypass. Mill Down Outdoor Adventures, Timmy and Michelle Campbell. It's Lola's. That's the hop skipping away from us here at our studio. Collier and Company Realty, Michelle Collier. You guys have seen her on here. She's co hosted for you too, and she's uh, Bill Wolfley, Station Baptist Church. Thank you. Uh, thank you to the Daily Stop on the Bypass. And uh, this, this is the news of Quilton Times, uh, which is. Well, that's where the loom was and so and dr dr smith dr office. smith and that part is what's open right now but the that's loom part is they're working hard on it open okay so yeah go check it out they're open monday through friday 11 to 4. that's it's called it's quilting time it's quilting time. <laughs> i like that <laughs> all right and we're back with glenn um before we get into sports and albertology we got to talk about Glenn's book that he has uh, it's just now coming out correct yes it came out in May oh cool it actually, okay it's, yeah, uh, tell us about it well it's called Be Great Every Day and um, the um, the way I got that title um, mm -hmm. my original name before my daddy changed it was Barry Greg Edson no way yeah so I used the BGE and I thought what can I come up with oh. the title and wow. I, I, I got B grade every day. <laughs> and so uh, that's how I came up with the, wow. the name. But uh, I wrote this, I started writing it back during uh, COVID in 2020. Yeah. Uh, 
had some friends and family that were going through depression and anxiety and everything like a lot of people you yeah. know, at that time. Yeah. And uh, and I, I knew their background and I thought, well, if they're a, a solid Christian background mm -hmm. and they're having those problems, mm -hmm. I imagine there's a lot of people who don't have that solid Christian background are having major problems. Oh, yeah. So I thought, well, I'm going to write this devotional book and see how it goes. And basically mm -hmm. what it's written, um, it's... To, um, it just makes points and it lets mm -hmm. people think on it. That's uh, it, good. It doesn't criticize come anybody. Come out preachy or nothing. That's no, good. No, no, it doesn't. I mean, it presents every every day there's a scripture there and then I'll, I, I have some thoughts on it and I, I make some questions and make people to try to think. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and that's the whole point of this book is to make them to think and yeah. think about how it applies to them. Mm -hmm. uh, you, know, you know, I don't preach to anybody in this mm -hmm. thing. It's just it's there for their uh, their yeah reading. their benefit really and um, so I did that and uh, I wrote it and um, like I said telling you earlier I went to one publisher and uh, he was too busy he he uh, publishes mm. a lot of uh, books right and uh, he said I like it but I'm just too busy and I said okay Fair I understand mm. so then I went to a, a publisher in Chattanooga and they publish ten books a year hmm. and. Uh, Oh. They sent, sent me back and said, hey, we really like it, <laughs> but you're number 11. <laughs> so I didn't, I didn't make the top Talk 10 Talk about a dollar short in a yeah. day late. And uh, so I thought, well, <laughs> shoot. I thought, no, I'm going to keep doing this because I, there's mm. got to be somebody out there that will publish this. And uh, Absolutely. So I ran across uh, this uh, publisher out of Ohio. Mm -hmm. And um, I got to talking with them, and I said, hey, would you take new... Uh, a manuscripts and they said yes yeah, send us what you got and let us look at it mm -hmm. and, and I did and uh, they liked it mm -hmm. and um, so then we went from there and there's a lot of back and forth you know editing yeah. and stuff and I know one day uh, I almost decided not to do this because I oh, really? you, well when you get down to the editing part uh, you know, you have to look at every word to see if they're spe if it's spelled right. Then you have to look at the sentences to make sure it's yeah, correct, yeah, grammar-wise. I would want to do that part. And then you look at the scripture, make sure you quoted the scripture right. Yeah, that's and, a lot. And so you go through, and I did that. They sent they sent the whole manuscript back to me, and I, and I said, go over it and you know edit it and make sure everything's okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I did. It took me about th three or four days. I mean, I was going through everything, you know, word per word. Man. And there's, like I say, there's 365 days in here. Oh, and, man, uh, I went crazy. So when I finished, <laughs> I sent it to them, and then it went into somewhere in the... Uh, oh, the yeah. Great, man, uh, you had bad luck it, at first, didn't you? Yeah, it just, it just went. And I, so I asked ah. them, I said, did y'all get this? And they said, no. <laughs> I said, oh, man. <laughs> and I spent, like I say, three or four days, I mean... Long that would days. yeah, that'd be a very long day. So uh, I said, okay. Boy, I'd be ill as a hornet if that happened. Well, to me. I, I was. <laughs> <laughs> I was pretty mad. Don't blame and, me. Uh, so I had, to, I had to step away from my desk for a few days and say, I'm going to question myself on this. I bet. So uh, then I went back and got mm -hmm. it, and uh, it just took time. And uh, the the people mm -hmm. that that have read it, they they like it. Um, uh, the first. <laughs> Matter of fact, the first 50 copies I got, mm -hmm. uh, the box came in and the box had a hole in it and it had been taped up everywhere and I thought, this ain't right, there's something wrong. Mm -hmm. And I opened up the box and there was 35 copies because there was a big hole, 15 copies that just they mm -hmm. weren't there. Dang. So thank goodness that my publisher had uh, insured mm -hmm. that. So, yeah, for real. Uh, so he had to send me some more copies. <laughs> Uh, and so, uh, but anyway, we, we finally got it going, and uh, uh, I've had a blast doing this. I want to uh, get it out to more and more people. I mm -hmm. want, uh, you know, not because I wrote it, but because mm -hmm. it, it would encourage people. That's what I want to do: is encourage people uh, yes. to, for them to to look at it. And because um, I've even had a, a preacher friend of mine, he, he came up to me. He goes, "You know, I looked on. It was back in the summer, and he said I looked at this day that." He said, I read that, and he said, that so much applies to me. 
Yeah. And I thought, oh, mm. well, great. You know, and I was thinking, well, you're a preacher. Right? <laughs> you <know? laughs> exactly. But, you know, we're all human. But we they're all, human, we all mess too. Up yeah. in, uh, so we can't put one above the other, you know, when That's it comes right. to preachers. A lot of times we like to put preachers on, on a pedestal sometimes. Yeah, I do think we tend to forget they're, they're just, human. Uh, they're human just like we are. That's so, true. Uh, uh, we shouldn't put them on a pedestal. We no. should make them our friend and uh, encourage them and support them. So I did the book, uh, mm -hmm. and then um, I had these mugs made right there. You can see that oh, uh, it's cool. got it's got the same uh, thing as the uh, book cover. And, oh, I uh, like it. Who and, made these mugs for you? Uh, it was a couple of girls I had in school uh, years ago. Wow. They, they, they do that now, and uh, they do a lot of things, and uh, they do woodworking and cups and all kind of things wow they so, have a they do that is that in Dunlap I'm assuming uh, or? yeah they uh one of them is actually lives in Cleveland but comes yeah. to Dunlap all the time and uh but I had both of them in school and a uh, sweet girl oh, uh, might put them to work and, uh, <laughs> it's and, uh, making but, me have some ideas but it's really a, uh, and this is actually my second book that I've written I wrote oh, one uh, when I was still teaching uh I had some students that uh we kept in an after school thing, uh, mm -hmm. just just with me, it wasn't through the school. Yeah. Uh, they were good story writers. I mean, oh, okay. I, I had them in class and I knew what they could do and, and they had shown me some of the things they had written. Mm -hmm. And so I asked them, I said, would y'all be interested in doing an after school class? And, and I was thinking about teaching them character and setting and plot and things like that. And um, after about uh, the second or third day, they said, let's write a book. <laughs> I said, Oh wow! Okay, <laughs> and I Dang. thought I, 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 that was not in my wheelhouse at that time, you know. And I think well, I struggle on this one, and, uh, and I they said, were okay. more ready than you. Uh, yeah, they were. They were. Yeah. So it was a science fiction book. It's called The Destin, and it's a good versus evil, and mm. we we all are characters in the book. Yes. And, uh, uh, the book is about special powers. We all had special powers, mm -hmm. and uh, and together we were were strong. But when we uh, were apart, we, so our, right. our powers weren't as uh, good. And uh, it, like I say, it was a good versus evil. And at the end of the book, uh, there's a battle, mm -hmm. and you don't see the evil uh, mm -hmm. person anymore. Anyway, you don't see them, so you don't know if they got killed in the battle or not. Oh, so it leaves it for, yeah. Uh, it leaves it for a second book, which um, smart. I'm working on. That's and, smart. Uh, just to, but there was uh, five seventh grade students, mm -hmm. and uh, you know they challenged me because what we did was when we would write a chapter in that book, we'd all write the chapter, and then the very next week we'd get back together and we'd read the, each other's chapter. And pick the best and, and one. Say, well, what we did, we said, well, I like that, and I like this, and I like that. Mm -hmm. And then we had one person who was really our, what we call our editor, mm -hmm. and he would take the parts we liked and put it all together. Because uh -huh. our goal was, we didn't care whose who's chapter got in and whose didn't. Yeah. All we wanted was the best, Yeah, what was that's best. Good. And so none of us were, we, didn't, we really didn't, didn't have care. egos, yeah. You know, yeah. We, we didn't, we didn't, uh, we weren't mad at each other if, because there was a time or two that uh, some of my chapters didn't even get picked. Right. And I thought, well, no, yours is a whole lot better than mine. I'll take, I'll take yours any day. You know? Right. <laughs> so um, it, it, it came out and mm -hmm. um, we did a self publishing on that because eventually what happened is I told the students, like this, they were teenagers. Mm -hmm. So I told them, I said, look, I said, y'all teenagers, I said, if y'all want to do teenage things, don't think you're going to have to stay here with me every day after school and work on this book. Yeah. I said, y'all want to do teenage things? I said, y'all go do it. Yeah, that's understandable. So it started out with five, and we wound up with uh, uh, two. Which, well, we wound up with one other. And, mm -hmm. uh, and I go to church with him now. And uh, we, we stayed, and we worked on that. And there were times when we uh, uh, were on the phone with our editors, and because... Uh, they would say, well, what about this? And then they would talk about certain phrases we had. Mm -hmm. And we we looked at it and said, it's a Southern thing you wouldn't understand. Just leave it alone. Mm -hmm. That's exactly <laughs> it, it right. A, we, we used uh, from uh, <laughs> uh, Southern Some phrases. Southernisms. Right? Yeah, and uh, so. Uh, How do you like that, Papa? <laughs> I like that. <laughs> so, but that that book turned out well, and uh, the the boy that helped write it that finished with me, he was the valedictorian of his class, and we got it published uh -oh. right before he graduated. Wow, wow! So uh, well, that was pretty cool. Uh, so that I mean, we're not uh, you know mm. uh, Ernest Hemingways or anything by that. Yeah, matter, yeah. But uh, we did what ninety nine percent of the people didn't do. We published exactly, the book. And, exactly. Uh, so, uh, Papa's uh, done that too. 
Uh, he's, so. he's wrote a book too. He might write you another, Papa. I've been thinking about it. Yeah, I think that's not a bad idea, don't you, Glenn? Well, I've, <laughs> that's true because I've got a couple of other ideas for some uh, more uh, some more devotional books like that. I'm going to do one on uh, Proverbs, and because Proverbs, the book of Proverbs, has got you know you've got two verses. It's, here's a sermon. Two verses. Here's another sermon. Mm-hmm. Here's another. This is all through the book of Proverbs, and so I'm oh, yeah. going to do something on that, and then I'm going to do one called uh, Porch Perspective that I uh, use. Uh, I, I, like I write that. when I'm on my front porch a lot. I, in the summer mm-hmm. months, I'll get out there for my coffee and sit on the porch and mm-hmm. just write. And I'm at ease then. Oh, yeah. that's relaxing. That yeah. Just that picture of doing that is relaxing. <laughs> well, now, the, the the new book, though, is called uh, Be Great Every Day, right? Yes. Uh-huh. And it's 365 devotionals to make each day the best day, folks. And you, you can get your copy where... Uh, you can uh, contact me. Uh, I, okay. I got them at, at home right now. Okay. And, and then, of course, uh, they could get through, uh, they could get uh, contact you through Facebook and stuff yeah, like yes, that too, uh-huh. couldn't they? Yes. Yeah. And, uh, check it out, folks. I, I think I'll have to check it out too. I think it's going to be a good read. I just didn't. I didn't know you uh, wrote, so that's pretty cool to know that. So I like right. that, Glenn. Well, that's kind of my background in mm-hmm. it's the writing part, and then. Mm-hmm. Uh, course like I say my communications with everything with TV and radio and yeah journalism, so well I think it'll do well I do well like I say I enjoy doing those things and mm-hmm. it's, it's just a lot of fun to me uh, of course yeah. a lot of, not everybody can write not everybody wants to write no uh, cause no I, I had plenty of students that didn't want to write <laughs> I bet I bet <laughs> they, they did write though though that's all that matters you know yeah. But anyway, that's... Uh, well, I, yeah, well, check it out, folks. Uh, and, uh, well, Glenn, you're going to stick around with us, ain't yes, you? Yes, for, All sure. right. Well, folks, it's time for some sports of all sorts, as Papa calls it, and some hourology, his favorite part of the show. Of course, it ends with jokes. So, uh, uh, sports, uh, yeah. What are we going to talk about with that? sports yesterday <laughs> on the Paul Feinbaum Show. I love that show. Do you do you know where Jim Harbo is going? <clears throat> yeah, he's he's leaving Michigan, going to San Diego. Yeah, he's going to be the coach of the Chargers. Why? Well, yeah, I know it's San Diego. I, I I don't understand that. He he's done this before too. Well, I know, but there's uh, there's some repercussions about something he did at Michigan. <clears throat> oh, and that's I true. I think this is the reason that's he why. wants to step aside. I forgot about that. I, I forgot all about that's that. That's just my. Uh, I think thinking. it's true, and you can chime in with us, Glenn, on this too. Don't, don't well, worry. He, he better be glad that they, they even got to play for the national championship. That's exactly right. That's the way I, I see think it. So too. I, I do too. So. Okay. Uh, last Tuesday, Tennessee entertained. Um, let's see. the The school they played was. Um, was it Florida? Uh, I think it was, uh, yeah, it was Florida. Mm-hmm. They, they come won. out. Connect got 39 points. Yes, he has put on a show here lately. He put on a show, and he could shoot three pointers or slam it. Oh, in. yeah. He was really something else. They put, they, 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 they drilled Florida. This is a legit Final Four team, Papa, now. He makes, he's that much of a difference maker. He Tennessee really is. Tennessee is uh, right, currently ranked number five, I think. Mm-hmm. Currently they are. Five. Uh, but Kentucky, I think, is... Uh, they're like number six or seven. I think at one time they were number eight. I think now they're number six. Yeah, yeah. But Kentucky lost a game last week. I, oh, who beat them? I Good. lost them. Uh, let's see. They won against Georgia, mm-hmm. but they lost. Uh, I don't well, remember which game it was they lost. But anyway, uh, South Carolina. South Carolina. South Carolina beat uh, oh, upset wow. Kentucky. Kentucky was number five before mm-hmm. the game. They lost seventy nine to sixty two. Dang, they didn't just upset them. They stomped them. <laughs> hey, dang. <laughs> South Carolina's not that good in, at men's basketball. Are they? I they never are think in of, girls. They are yeah, girls. yeah, yeah. I, I would never thought the men though. In the uh, yesterday on the Paul Feinbaum show, <laughs> he he asked the question: Who will be the best quarterback this year? In college football, mm. 
Like for the upcoming year? Oh, okay. wow. Brady Cook was number one. Okay. Uh, that's from Missouri. Mm -hmm. and, I get uh, that. He's good. Alabama's quarterback, Milrow. Mm -hmm. uh, wah, wah, wah. <laughs> Jackson Dart. I did not know what school he was representing. I don't either. I don't even know. I never heard that name. But when Tennessee's quarterback came up, they just gave his first name, Nico. I can yeah. see, honestly yeah, see I why. I can understand that. I can understand that completely. I um, cannot say his name. <laughs> it's a long one. Also, last week I was watching the Paul Feinbaum <laughs> show and they asked for the three top coaches in college football today. Today? Okay, I want to hear this. Kirby Smart. Of course, yeah. Jim Harbaugh. Of course, yeah. Kalen DeBoer. Who? Washington, mm -hmm. Alabama. Oh, Alabama yeah. Alabama's from coach. Kalen DeBoer. Okay. Yeah, uh, so he has one great year at Washington, and he's Alabama's coach now. That's who they pick. Yeah. Well, and, he's, uh, he's 112. He's 106 and 12. That is a good it, record. It, That's a very good not record. Bad. Not at all. Mark Stoops was also listed. You know. Oh, well, yeah. He, Kentucky. Him and his brother would be on and, there, I'm and sure. And they asked for three. They said Mark Stoops, Mark Stoops, Mark Stoops. <laughs> <laughs> so that must have been a Kentucky fan. Apparently that so. Yeah. Apparently yeah. so. <laughs> and uh, then uh, our Lady Vols took on Vanderbilt this week. Last week. That was a good game. And they won seventy-three to sixty-four. Yes. Jackson gave them sixteen points. Yeah, and that's that. She didn't play in the whole fourth quarter. She did not play. No. no. And she still had and a double. This double. was the one hundredth win for Kelly Harper. Oh yeah, that is right. That is right. And they, uh, uh, the girl coaching Vanderbilt, she used to play for UConn. That's their coach now, Shay Ralph. But you know, in the last 38 games, Vanderbilt has played in Knoxville. Vanderbilt's only won one game. Yeah. Well, really? I know. One out of 38. At the well, Lava, they, hey, they, was, they, were, they never did win Knoxville against Pat Summit. No. That was one of the many records that Holly Warlick, you know, destroyed as she was coach. Gosh. Auburn is number eight. They're yeah, Bruce Auburn. Pearl. Yeah, that's true. So we yeah. got three teams in the top ten. Three. And Ole Miss is number 22. Yeah, they're good. They've just lost to us. That's it. Tennessee beat them. Last Saturday, we played Alabama, and we beat, uh, beat Alabama 91 to 71. Mm -hmm. yeah, and the tide did not roll. <laughs> <laughs> they got rolled. <laughs> they got rolled. Yeah, I was. But uh, now Connect, before we got this, Connect, um, will he have another year of eligibility, or do we yeah. not? He, oh, I hope he, he comes back. He transferred, I believe it was from Colorado, wasn't it? Northern Colorado, I believe. I thought, well, it might have been Colorado, but somebody said Northern Colorado. I don't know about that. Well, if it's somebody that talented was playing at Northern Colorado, it's because he did not have the grades at first or something. <laughs> yeah. Because he okay. is very talented. I'm going to Is that it for sports? I mean, that's it for sports. I'm going to do a little bit of Albert Ollie yeah, before fine. I do the jokes. we got to have Albertology. Yeah. Did you know the United States president has five jobs? Mm -mm. Number one, he's the head of the executive branch. Mm -hmm. This includes Congress and Supreme Court. Right. He is also number two, he's the head of foreign affairs. Mm -hmm. He keeps in touch with other countries. Yeah. Number <laughs> three, he's leader of the party that elected him He's mm -hmm. also the leader of the governors of those states mm -hmm. and also Congress. The one we got now ain't the leader of nothing. He can't complete a sentence, so. Number four, he's <laughs> That's the leader true. of the people. <laughs> the people of the United States look to the president of the United States. He is our boss. He ain't mine. Number five, he's the head, the ceremonial head of the state he represents the country the united states That's wherever he goes whatever he does yeah he's been pretty embarrassing lately honestly like today he come out with a speech like they could not even tell what he was saying like they tried to cipher it I, nobody even knows what he said and he's at this big event like it's just too, it's ridiculous it's maybe ridiculous it's better, at this maybe point. it's better not to understand what he said it, it is <laughs> it is it's just it's pathetic though did you know the tomb of the unknown soldier this is what it says mm -hmm. here rest 
yeah. in honor and glory, an American mm -hmm. soldier, known but to God. Yep. In Gettysburg, Carolyn has been there. Mm -hmm. We learned about in, him at school. Though, in soldier. Gettysburg, there's 1,000 unmarked, mm -hmm. unknown soldiers. Yep. That I didn't know. In, in Gettysburg. And they said that when Mr. Lincoln wrote that speech that he gave at Gettysburg, that began with four score and seven years ago, our yeah. fathers brought forth all Oh, this yeah, stuff. that one. They said that on the train, on the way to the delivering of that speech, he wrote it on the back of an envelope. I've heard that too, Papa, but I forgot about that. Hey, that's amazing, isn't it? Eating one ounce of nuts a day will lengthen your life, according to the New England Journal of Medicine. Oh, okay. Okay. What kind of nuts? Uh, just say peanuts or just what? Just any type? Just nuts. Just nuts. <laughs> Uh, I had a lady friend. To, <laughs> Apparently, I had a lady friend to give me a two and a half jar, two and a half pound jar of peanuts for Christmas. Mm -hmm. I called her the other night and I said, "I'm halfway through that jar." <laughs> okay, you're ready for that. Be bringing you another one then, won't she? Uh, <laughs> I bet. She also gave me a tub of popcorn. Oh yeah, I might have to help you with that one. Uh, this <laughs> now we're ready for jokes. Okay, you can slow down speed. I want to give you some jokes. Well, you gotta have jokes, that's for sure. You've been this, on the roll lately, so let's see if it continues, Glenn. After my class read Little Red Riding Hood, mm -hmm. I asked the young students what lesson they might learn from reading the story of Little Red Riding Hood. Mm -hmm. And I was looking for the students to say, beware of strangers. <laughs> yeah, the big bad wolf. But one student's response got my attention. This student <laughs> said, know what your grandmother looks like. Ooh, isn't that the <laughs> truth? I love that. I love that. That is that funny. Too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I always question how smart Little Red Riding Hood actually was when I was a kid. You know, like, come on now. <laughs> this, uh, this student said, the best one hour one liner in a student paper this mm. year this is what the student said yes, sir. the analysis is severely limited by my lack of understanding what i am doing Ooh, i like that <laughs> bless his heart just be honest he was being honest a yeah. chicago website recalled the time that cardinal blaise kupich then an archbishop boarded a plane and could not fit his carry-on case into the overhead compartment. <laughs> Finally, a man grabbed his bag mm -hmm. and shoved it into the compartment. And then he said to the father that would have been elevated to the archbishop, he said, will this get me to heaven? Ooh. He said, well, I hope not on this trip. <laughs> <laughs> And I have always maintained... Well, that would be Papa right there, Glenn. I've always maintained that I do not want to ride on a plane. I don't know it. And people say, well, if you're a Christian, what does it matter where you are when it comes your time to die? I said, it does not matter. But I don't want to be on a plane when it comes to the pilot's <laughs> time to die. <laughs> and you got to remember, the Lord said, and lo, I will be with you always. <laughs> Yes, yeah. he will. Yes, he will. Okay, I've got some more jokes I want to tell you about. Well, do tell, Papa. I'll buy the some new jokes. husband store. The new new hus husband store. Okay. A store selling new husbands has just <laughs> opened. It has special instructions. Oh, me. You may visit the store only one time. There are six floors, and the value of the products increase as you go up. You may choose from any floor right. or keep on going up, right. but you cannot go back down except you exit where we say exit the store. Oh. So a woman goes to the husband's <laughs> store and she goes on the escalator, floor <laughs> one. These men That's have crazy. jobs. <laughs> That's all it says. These men have jobs. So she oh. thinks, okay. well, I'm going to see what's on the second floor. So floor two. These men have jobs and love kids. That's okay. nice, she says. 
but I think I want more than a, than that. Just somebody <laughs> who has a job and takes loves kids. Right. So floor three, she gets to this place and it says these men have jobs, love kids, and are very handsome, <laughs> lovely. She thinks, but what else is there? Let me try floor four. <laughs> So she goes up to floor four, and it says, These men have jobs, love kids, are drop-dead handsome, and help with housework. <laughs> wow, she thinks, but she continues on up to floor five. I have a feeling she should have probably stopped at some point. Floor five. <laughs> These men have jobs, yeah. love kids, are gorgeous, help with housework, right. and have a strong romantic streak. Okay. <laughs> She's tempted to stay on floor five, but there must be more, right? So she continues. Not gonna be up, much more, are they? She continues up to floor six. <laughs> floor six. Your visitor number thirty-one million four hundred eighty-five thousand one hundred forty-five to this floor. Good. There Lord. are no men on this floor. <laughs> this floor exists solely for the proof that women are impossible to please. <laughs> Thank you for visiting the husband's store. Turn left and take the escalator down to the exit. Now, oh, now listen. The new wife's store. Oh, there's a new... <laughs> okay. To avoid gender bias charges, another store opened up across the street where men could choose a wife. There you go. The same rules apply. Right. Floor one, women that love sex. Floor two. Hey, there you go. <laughs> women, floor two, women that love sex, have money, and like to drink beer. <laughs> the third, fourth, and fifth floors have never been visited. <laughs> that is so true. God. <laughs> Andy My Rooney. God, that's funny. Andy Rooney. <laughs> said this about prisons. <laughs> okay. Did you know it costs forty thousand dollars a year to house each prisoner? Dang. For forty thousand bucks a piece, I'll take a few few prisoners into my house. <laughs> I live in Los Angeles and I have bars on my windows already. <laughs> Halfway there. A young man was hired by a huge international firm as a trainee. On his first day there, he called the dining room and said, bring me hot coffee and make it quick. Dang. He's just a trainee now. Yeah, bo the off voice boss the, head, he? the voice from the other end said, you idiot, you punched in the wrong number. Do you know who you're talking to? No, said the trainee. Well, I'm the managing director of the company. <laughs> oh, crap. Oh, really? The trainee <laughs> said, do you know who you're talking to? No, he said, well, good. <laughs> he hung up. He hung up. <laughs> oh, wow, that's good, too. That's this, nine exuberant blondes <laughs> come charging into a bar. They order five bottles of champagne and ten glasses to carry it all to a table. Dang, they're the celebrating. The are popped, the glasses filled, and these nine beautiful blondes <laughs> begin chanting 51 days, 51 days, 51 days, mm -hmm. and giving each other high fives. They're celebrating, they're drinking their champagne, and after a few minutes, a tenth blonde comes in. They, you remember, they got 10 glasses. Oh, yeah. And she balances a framed mm -hmm. picture against one of the bobble, bottles. And they all began dancing around the table looking at this picture that she had a frame for. Right. 51 days, 51 days. Finally, the bartender can stand it no more. <laughs> so he comes over and says, what's all this celebrating about? Yeah, the blonde me. who brought in the picture said, you know everyone thinks blondes are dumb and they make fun of us. <laughs> so we decided to set them straight. Ten of us got together and bought a jigsaw puzzle and put it together. <laughs> the side of the box said two to four years, but we put it together. <laughs> 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 Doing blondes? Ooh, yeah, I would say, oh, they should be proving this dumb, though. 
Dad, Golly, Dad was good. Mail up, Papa. You're on a roll. Good Lord, those are good. Those three, those are three that make you side hurt and laugh out loud good. Yeah. <laughs> that new husband store, new That was store. great. That was great. And then the one he just told was good too. Those were good. Well, the streak does continue, folks. He's still on a good streak with the jokes, Glenn. <laughs> Uh, thank you guys for joining us today. Thank you, Glenn Edison, for uh, being our guest today. Thank you. You can uh, watch Glenn on Valley Views on Channel 18 and on the BTC Fiber YouTube channel. So check him out on there and check out his new book as well. Be great every day. And uh, we'll be back next week for another edition of the Albert and Billy Show. We want to hear some ideas about our 300th episode. It's going to be here before you guys know it. It really is. Yes. So well, eleven more weeks. I know. So we've really got to get to, to figuring that out. But when we do, we'll let you know. Now, feel like I said earlier, feel free to give us some ideas, cause I'll, I'll take whatever I can get, really. So if you have any ideas for us for a three hundredth episode, feel free to share. And until next week, folks, you guys have a great week. Be safe. Be happy. Be healthy. And we'll see you guys next time. See, see you, you later. Thank you. Thank you, Glenn. Thank you. I appreciate it. Hey, folks. Albert and Billy here. You're watching us on Channel 18, BTC Fiber. Check us out on BTC Fiber YouTube channel. Be sure to subscribe and like. And check out our Facebook page. Be sure to like and share. Thanks, everybody, for watching.